Hi, this is a demonstration of the sheet metal module available for Creo Elements Direct Modeling. The first thing uh, I need to do is to activate the module and we can see here in the uh, applications we've got sheet metal so if I turn this on and close we now have a new uh, ribbon menu bar. Uh, I can actually fix those so that they're permanently open. Uh, I prefer to uh, have them minimized, minimized to give myself more screen uh, real estate. Okay, I'm going to jump into my model manager environment, into my workspace, and in my recent list, at the top, I've got my sheet metal example. I'm going to load full geometry, not lightweight. Okay, and uh, in good old Blue Peter fashion, uh, I have one that I did earlier. So this is what we're going to uh, quickly put together. Uh, I'm going to turn that off now and I'm going to start by uh, allowing me to modify these items that came from the database. And we shall start by setting this as my active work plane. So the basic concept is we have a work plane and I pre-created some geometry on the work plane. Obviously otherwise it would take us too long to create the movie. Uh, if I select my work plane, because I have my sheet metal module activated, uh, it gives me various options. So I can add, create a new part by outline because it recognizes the profile. Okay, So I shall select that. I'm going to take the, uh, the default material and thickness. We can see the direction that it's going to apply the materials and we just say OK. So here's our start part. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just set my next work plane to active. I'm going to rotate that round so we can see what we're doing and just zoom in. Okay, I just have a polyline on this new work plane and if I select the work plane I have add by polyline. So it, 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 it's intelligent, it really does help here. Um, if I wanted to jump into the standard menus I have the same options uh, obviously available. Uh, I prefer the um, context sensitive because I don't have to be jumping in and out of menus. Okay, so it's asking me which side do I want to apply material. I want this side of the polyline. You can see the direction arrow is telling me it's going to put material in this direction and it's asking me what length the material is. So I'm going to choose 55 millimeters and say OK. OK, so here we are. That's my new and it's added a, uh, a bend relief in there. We'll touch on that in a minute. So my net work plane, clearly if I'd have um, had to create all of these work planes as we go, it would take us a little bit too long. So in the interests of uh, not keeping you too long, here's my next work plane. And as you can see, I have a completely closed profile. So if I select it this time, I've got the option to add material by outline rather than by polyline. If I choose this, um, this is where you get the, the bend process option, so air uh, bending, bend forming, etc. And you can pick uh, radiuses. You can also choose which type of bend relief uh, that you want, etc. Uh, so if I say OK, we've added this material. And as you can see, in this area here, let me just zoom in we can see the bend reliefs that have been applied. Okay, so everywhere that we're using this, uh, we're going to start to see these bend reliefs. So, the next one is we're going to add a corner plate here. And if I do this, again, we've got a single polyline. If I choose my work plane, I'm going to select Add by Polyline. I want material on this side. And this time I want a length of 38 millimeters. I don't want to keep the work plane and say OK. So we can see that it's added this material. Uh, we're up against that face, which is what I wanted. Um, again, we've got this, uh, this bend relief down here. Right, next work plane. I'm going to set it to active because this time we're going to use a uh, standard modeling command called overdraw. Now, as you can see, I've got construction geometry on my work plane. What I want to do is I want to start from here and go in that direction, that direction. And all I'm doing is, is moving along to say where I want my 
overtour command to be and we've just created a, a closed geometry profile as opposed to construction lines if I now select my work plane you can see that I can add by outline okay we can see that the direction the material is going to be added and this time we're going to choose to keep the work plane because we do want to add um, a punch command if I go to sheet metal and I'm going to choose punch here we give the type of tool that we require I'm just going to add a round hole uh, two is not I'm going to pick three which is a preferred size and put one hole there you see the out the rings the blue rings that it's showing you this is basically uh, in case you are getting too close to an edge or too close to a bend and we'll see later that if you do it comes up with warnings so it's intelligent um, I'll just delete that word play okay active our next Feature. I've got this profile on this work plane. Now, this time it's not a, a sheet metal command. I'm just going to go to modeling and I'm going to use the pull command. If I select my arrow, if I drag this way, it looks as if it wants to add material. If I go this direction, it will look to remove material. You can override this, but in this case, this is it is what I want. And I want to keep the work plane because there's some other bits I want to add. I'm going to go back to my punch command choose a round, I'm going to choose a 3mm round again pop my holes in like so okay middle mouse to select and there I've got these these new holes in my sheet metal part now these um, holes in the sheet metal part they're actually uh, recognized by the geometry so that uh, when you transfer through to a drawing or straight through to a cam application uh, it will understand um, what do I want to choose here oh, I think I've chosen the wrong thing I don't want to stamp I want to punch so I'm going to pick punch uh, I want an oblong and I'm going to pick the 6.4 so these tools you can build your own library of, of tools if the standard ones uh, don't have everything you need okay and I'm just going to middle mouse there we go and we've added these in there as well so next set to active if I do right click view by current work plane and fit it jumps me around like that this time what I want to do is I want to punch a hole through these two positions but through both pieces of um, metal so if I go to my sheet metal and select punch I'll choose the tool and the size but before I apply where I want the holes to be, if I put a distance greater than two times the thickness, when I apply it, it will go through both both pieces of material. As you can see, we've got a hole that goes uh, right through. And then I'm going to delete my work plane. Okay, uh, next, uh, I think we need a, a cable slot at the back, which is here. Okay, so we need to put a lip on this edge. If I select an edge, it gives me the option to add a, a, a lip or a, an offset or a, a hem so I'm going to choose to um, apply a lip uh, it's showing me the direction it will add the material I'm going to pick a lip length of 38 millimeters okay now my, my, my problem here is I'm too close to this edge and as you can see don't see too well underneath we've already got a bend relief at this corner and I don't want those conflicting so what I'm going to do, and there's all sorts of uh, corner and angle options, etc. here. I'm just going to bring this in 10 millimeters because I don't need this material. Okay, um, happy with that. Don't need to keep the work plain and say okay. So I've got my uh, my lip on this edge now. Uh, I'm going to choose this. Uh, and really, what I again, I want to go into my standard modeling. Use the pull command remove material and say OK. OK. Um, next one, set active. OK. And move over like so. So I've got two profiles and we're going to add material to both at the same time. It's doing automatically selecting by outline because it understands that it's found two closed profiles. So I shall accept that. 
I'm going to keep the work plane because there's something else I want to add. So I've added my two lips here with the necessary bend reliefs in. Go to my sheet metal, select the punch command, choose a round, 3 millimeters. So this time when I choose um, my um, where I'm going to place this hole, we can actually see that it's close to this bend here. When I select to place it, it's telling me that I'm too close to the bend and the, the minimal distance needs to be 6.4 millimeters away. Um, it's an orange warning so that it will actually allow you to continue. If you get a red warning, it means it will definitely deform the material so that you shouldn't do it. I'm going to select to continue, okay, because I'm just going to move along to my other area here and I'm going to choose one, I'll get the same warning which I'm expecting and I'm going to put one at the top which is fine. Okay, I'm going to choose to delete that work plane I'm going to zoom out and pan along. So there you go, my two new lips on those edges. Okay, next I need to, oops, in this area I'm going to put a lip on this edge I'm going to put a lip of the material in that direction of 25, oops, 26 millimeters. Tab to accept and say OK. So there is that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, uh, what I call a joggle. It, 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 um, it calls them an offset. I don't know why I call it a joggle. It must be an old fashioned name along this edge, so it walks me down the options I need, which is the split point, it's going to split about that construction line, and this is the raising face. So if I say OK, and you'll see what it's done, it's basically put a, a joggle and raise that face out. Right, um, I can select this work plane, and I can just hit delete to remove it. Uh, wrong edge, so cancel that, I want to be on this edge, and I'm going to put a hem on that edge, and I want 5 millimeters, and straight away it's telling me uh, that 5 millimeters is smaller than the minimal. It needs to be a minimum of 6 millimeters for this particular tool. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that and then make it 6 millimeters and select OK, and there I've got my, my hem. Okay, so nearly at the end, and we're just going to set this last work plane as active because I'm going to zoom out and what we want to do here is we're going to apply sheet metal punch uh, around three millimeters and we want one here and we want one here middle mouse except so I've got those two holes in there next I want to stamp I'm going to put what's called a lance uh, I've only got one set up and I need to put them in these areas that I've already predefined with construction geometry on my work plane. Okay, like that middle mouse, and it creates these um, stamped features, as you can see. Okay, so next, what I'm gonna do is I need to put some holes in here. Ooh, all fingers and thumbs. So, I'm gonna go to sheet metal, punch, round, uh, three millimeters, I want one here and one here. So I've applied those. I'm going to zoom in because I want to select, oops, no, not the edge. Select that face and holding shift that face as well, middle mouse. I've got the option to move the feature. Okay, if I click on this green tick, I've got some additional options because what I actually want to do is repeat this seven times. I'm going to zoom out, and as you see, as I drag it to my next point, it's showing me, so I could you know, double the distance, etc. I'm going to select that point, middle mouse to accept, and it will go through and create those additional features. Uh, it's moved the originals, I didn't choose to keep uh, the original uh, features, which I, I did have that option, that's my mistake, but I'm, I'm sure you understand. Okay. Ooh. So I'm going to delete that work plane, like so. I'm going to fit the screen, like so. And if I just jump to my rendered view and switch my original off. Okay, here's my sheet metal part that I've created. Uh, what I want to do now, just to finish off, 
is I could run a bend animation. Uh, which bends do I want? Well, I'll box it and select everything. So it's telling me that it's 267 that it doesn't recognize, which will all be in these other areas. But all the main sheet metal bends it's recognized, which is my base face. That's my base face. Let's just drag this menu away so it's not in the way. So I can say start, and then it will start to unfold uh, my sheet metal part for me, which is quite neat. Gives you an idea of the final profile. This can be output uh, as a DXF profile with all of the machining information on it. it. Obviously, it can be transferred through to a drawing as well. So, um, final thing is, it's going to run through this twice, bring it back up again. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can, um, if you want to showboat a little bit, we'll just run one cycle and we'll put a rotation angle of 360 degrees. Press start and there's our, our finished sheet metal part. Okay, that's it. That's my uh, brief demonstration on the sheet metal module for Elements Direct Modeling. Thank you.